Charming, charming. Exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> but these pictures are not for sale. Nonsense, Monsieur Brudel. I will take the whole lot. Name a fair price. I will write you a check. But I told you, these pictures are not for sale. Now, would you please leave? Monsieur Brudel, I know the true value of these paintings. Now, your price. You will sell to me, or these paintings will be confiscated by the French government. Now, monsieur, name your price. Can't we go back to the hotel now? My feet are killing me. Biff, we've been to Paris five times and never really seen the Louvre before. Now, I'm not going to let you give up. But I bet we've walked ten miles in here. I bet you like to hike. In the mountains? Yeah. When I'm in Paris, I'd rather sit in the sidewalk cafe and watch the world go by. You mean watch the girls go by. Come on, Baker, on your feet. Where are we now? Oh, well, it says this is a, a special exhibition of modern art. Just look at this. What is it? Uh, well, it says this is one of the most distinguished examples of surrealism. The clean lines, the mobility of mass, the freedom from restraint. Yes. Oh, Biff, isn't it beautiful? Doesn't it just do something to you? Nothing a little fresh air wouldn't take care of. Beth Baker, you have no interest in the finer things in life. Pardon, madame, monsieur. J'ai jamais vu une chose pareille. Jamais dans ma vie, j'ai vu. C'est impossible. How can such a thing happen? C'est incroyable. Honey, you know what? I think it looked better the other way. And this, girls, is Leonardo da Vinci's ageless lady, the Mona Lisa. A portrait of the Madonna Lisa del Giocondo. Professor Beecham. Uh, yes, Marjorie? It's so dull and dirty looking. Yes, the, uh, the first look is often a disappointment. And Marjorie, don't bite your fingernails. We recall, however, Vasari's glowing description of its marvelous bloom of color. Now, alas, the bloom of this lovely face has gone forever. The background, once as vivid as nature herself, has faded and acquired a patina of age, which has made the face appear a little white and chalky, and caused those exquisite brows and eyelashes over which Vasari raves to disappear. But this painting is far more than a mere portrait. The, uh, the human head, the landscape, the whole atmosphere is the epitome of Leonardo's aesthetics, his ideal. The full brow, the noble neck, the perfect hands, so beautiful in line and curve, are the same, even though the glory of the color has departed. Those melting eyes see as far into the mystery of the human soul as they did when Francis I bought it from the reluctant painter. Leonardo da Vinci was a professor. See? A professor slow. Artemis Beecham, the art critic. He's our art appreciation teacher back home. You're an American, aren't you? Yeah. What's he doing with you kids? Kids? The, uh, the I mean, young ladies. He's on his annual pilgrimage to Europe, and he offered to oversee a group of us making the tour. But all he ever does is take us to art galleries and museums. But with this panoramic view of never-ending vistas, Leonardo created something all his own. Now, there is Raphael's Joanna of Aragon, Titian's Laura de Anti. There is Jean Clouet's lady, <coughs> the unknown woman of Velasquez. El Greco, Goya, Reynolds, Romney, Gainsborough, all have painted exquisite and lovely ladies. But the Mona Lisa remains the supreme portrait of a woman. Others may be more obviously beautiful, but the, the subtlety, the enigma, the seductiveness of La Gioconda has never been equaled in any other work by any painter of any time. Hmm. 
Hmm. What is it? Do we know a man named Gautier? Gautier? No. Well, he called while we were out. Probably the father of that teenage wolf girl back at the Louvre. It was sort of awful, wasn't it? <laughs> Ooh, my feet. Awful? Who are you trying to kid? You loved every minute of it. Sort of like you, too, Miss Baker. Uh. <laughs> I guess if you didn't, you'd leave me at home. Especially when you're traveling to Paris. Especially Paris in the spring. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Hello? Who? Well, what does he want? Oh, fine. All right, thank you. Well, our mystery man, Gautier, is on his way up. Coming up here? Oh, I look awful. Oh, you look wonderful. Monsieur Beto? Yes? Bonjour, monsieur. I am Paul Gautier. How do you do? Pardon this intrusion, but I must see you. Well, come on in. Thank you. Oh. Oh, Mr. Gautier, Mrs. Baker. How do you do? Enchanté, madame. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I have been anxiously awaiting your arrival in Paris, monsieur. Me? Why me? Uh, oh, sit down, please. <laughs> Thank you. I'm an artist's agent. As a buyer for one of the largest American importing firms, you cannot afford to miss the bargain I have discovered for you. Paintings? I'm afraid that's out of my line. I'm no judge of art. <laughs> Do not trouble about that. Jules Bridel is a fine artist. But unfortunately, he needs money. But his paintings are superb, unique. He has made this group for commercial purposes, hoping to sell more of them. But in America, monsieur, in America. Bib, we might discover a great modern painter. Honey, haven't you seen enough paintings today? Where would we have to go, monsieur Gaudier? Uh, Montparnasse. I myself will bring you there. My car is outside. Oh, now, wait a minute, you oh, two. Please, Biff, I've always wanted to visit the studio of a real left bank artist. Thank you, madame. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. 175,000 francs, 500 dollars for the lot. It is a bargain, no? Would you excuse us for just a moment, please? Certainly, madame. Grab them, Biff. They're good. They're very good. But who wants to buy originals for kids? Well, plenty of people will at the price you'll be able to sell. They'll be very popular. Believe me, you can't go wrong. Okay, honey. But I sure hope my old job selling vacuum cleaners is still open. <laughs> it's a deal, Mr. Gautier. Good. Splendid. I have them crated and delivered to your hotel later. Biff, why not take one with us now and air express it to New York? Oh, sure. Then they can fire me by cable. Mr. Gautier, if the Home Office likes them, I might be able to get you several more orders while we're still in Paris. Biff, this one's enchanting. This ought to sell them. Oh, you and your art appreciation. I'll send you a check when the others are delivered. Thank you, monsieur. Thank you, madame. Thank you. Good day, monsieur Bidel. Good day, madame. Goodbye. What'd you do? I spilled nail polish all over it. Well, as my mother always used to say, no use crying over spilled nail polish remover. <laughs> Bill. Well, honey, the artist has got five others. We can send one of the other ones. Yeah, but this one was so lovely. And... Biff, look. What? There's another painting underneath this one. Well, I guess Bridell must figure if you can't sell them, paint over them. Saves money on canvases that way. <laughs> look, since it's ruined anyway, let's see what's underneath. Wait a minute. That's no modern work. Why, it's, it's old and faded. Look how it's cracked. Come on, honey. Get the dime detective look out of your eyes. So it's old and cracked. But haven't you ever heard how they cover up these old paintings before? Maybe we've really got something valuable here. Well, now, there is something I wouldn't know. It would take an expert. Beecham. 
Huh? Professor Artemis Beecham, the art critic from back home. Remember, we saw him in the Louvre this morning. He's registered here. I saw him in the lobby. Why, of course. As a fellow countryman, I'm sure he wouldn't let us down in our hour of need. I'll call him. But it can't be. Well, in all my born days, this is certainly the most amazing. Professor, what is it? I'm not quite sure yet. Um, acetone. Brush. It is. It is. Oh, dear. It is? What is, Professor? What are you talking about? It's Raphael's masterpiece, La Belle Jardinière. But it can't be the original one. We just saw it this morning hanging in the Louvre. Yes, of course. It was there. It... Oh, but now, wait a minute. You haven't cleaned enough off to be sure that this is a copy of anything. Oh, but I have, Mr. Baker. I know that background anywhere. The uh, part of the glazes are rubbed off, and the state of preservation is not too good. I'd stake my professional reputation that this is the original Raphael. The, the original? Oh, dear. This one is a copy. But, Professor, how can you be so certain you didn't notice anything wrong this morning? But I didn't expect anything wrong. And, uh, and this is an excellent copy, right down to the varnish. Oh. Biff. Paul Gautier and the artist, Jules Bridell, they're watching us. Just take it easy, honey. Don't let on. I believe some of these other pictures are copies. The, uh, the Titian, one of the Correggios, even the Mona Lisa herself. It's incredible. Professor, we've got to get out of here. Huh? But, but, but this is a matter for the director of the museum. It's a matter for the police. Now get there as quickly as you can. Louise and I will go back to the hotel and keep an eye on the painting. Go out that way. We'll try and stall them. Oh, oh dear. Go on, Professor, now. <laughs> Just be nonchalant, honey. They can't try anything in here. If I'm scared. Well, I don't see either one of them. We'll grab a cab and go back to the hotel. Mr. Baker, don't make any foolish move. I wouldn't hesitate to use that gun. Go in there. What kind of a deal is this? We are concluding our business transaction. We want the sample painting back. Well, you don't think I carry it on me, do you? No, but you will return to your hotel and get it. You would go with him? Mais non. The hotel could turn out to be a trap for us. Where did you send your friend, the professor? Oh, as I thought. The police cannot help you, Mr. Baker. Look, I don't know what kind of a deal this is, but you're not going to get that painting. And you're not going to go very far with that gun, either. You Americans are so stubborn, but also sentimental. If I have to, I will kill both of you, but I will shoot your wife first. He wouldn't dare. I can't take the chance, honey. All right, Gautier, we'll get your painting. No, your wife stays with us. That's no deal. You have no choice. Go ahead, honey. They want the painting, not me. Return to your room and wait until you are contacted. Now go. Mr. Baker, this way. Keep moving. Don't look back. Madame, this way, please. Just a minute. Come in, gentlemen, come in. Uh, this is Monsieur Boutroux of the Sûreté, Mr. Baker, uh, and uh, Monsieur Poincaré, an agent of the French government. How do you do? Uh, the painting, Mr. Baker, where is it? The painting? Uh, what painting? But it, it was you who sent me for the police. And we're right. The painting hanging in the Louvre is a copy. Is that so? Where is Madame Baker? Uh, they have taken your wife as a hostage. Oh. Is that it? No, my wife is shopping. I don't know anything about any painting. Mr. Baker. You are going to have to trust me. 
You are in a foreign country, but we would do nothing to jeopardize Madame Baker's safety. But I... The painting, please. Excuse me. Excuse me, gentlemen. Here it is. Now, you see? The background, the state of preservation, the varnish. Hmm? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, why did you obtain this, monsieur? I got it from an artist named Jules Bridel. He had an agent, Paul Gautier, that acted for him. Is this one of them? Yeah, that's Gautier. <laughs> no, Mr. Baker, his real name is Paul Gullivan. Gullivan, so his name is Gullivan. What's the difference? What's this all about, anyway? Well, during the war, the most important art treasure of the Louvre were hidden. Unfortunately, many were stolen, and excellent copies were substituted. Now, these copies were detected, but they have hung in the Louvre since the liberation, while the Sûreté has been secretly tracing the missing originals. Uh, we felt certain they had not left the country. We had reason to believe that a man named Muller was on the trail of this painting. But... Late today, Muller's body was fished out of the Seine. He was strangled. Now, uh, this uh, Bridel studio is near the Seine, isn't it? Yeah, but you can't go there. That might be where they're holding Louise. I will give order to have a place under surveillance, mm -hmm. uh, from a distance, of course. Hello? Baker speaking. Monsieur Baker, are you alone? Yes. You will come at one in the morning to the private cemetery of the Chateau de Cambon. You will bring the painting with you. Chateau de Cambon. Uh, how do I get there? Turn off to the left at Villeneuve Saint Georges on the road to Fontainebleau. It is 11 kilometers. Villeneuve Saint Georges. 11 kilometers. Come along. You are being watched. Do not notify the police if you wish to see Madame Baker. How is my wife? Hello? Hello? Well, you all heard. I've got to go there alone with the painting. Monsieur, you will go alone with the painting, but not this one. The copy of La Belle Jardinière now hanging in the Louvre is excellent. That can be used to ransom Madame Baker. And supposing they spot it? Mm -hmm. It has deceived experts. This way, the real painting will be protected, but you will get your wife back. We will not interfere until you do. I'll see that the copy of the Louvre is delivered to you. But the painting, it'll have to be just like this one, painted over and framed. Uh -huh. Professor Beecham, isn't this your department? Oh, well, yes, I have some talents as a painter. <laughs> I believe I can make a very creditable copy of the fairy tale scene. <laughs> but we only have a couple hours. I've got to be there at one. Can you do it? It'll be blood, sweat, and tears, but I'll try. Can't you hurry it up, Professor? I don't know how I always get mixed up in these things. Why would they use me? What's the point in exporting these paintings? Well, you are a well-known and trusted commercial traveler. They knew you would be passed through customs without question. The fairy tale scenes being taken for what they seem to be. Oh, and then their collaborators would buy them for peanuts, is that it? Mm-hmm. And the masterpieces would be resold to unscrupulous private collectors for millions. Come on, Professor, we're losing time. <laughs> Professor, I can't wait any longer. Finished. Hmm. Well, what do you think? Well, it would fool me. I sure hope it works. But it's still wet. Can we take it now? Aha. Uh -huh. But I use tempera paints. They will dry immediately. This should deceive them in daylight. And it will be dark where you're going. Yeah, but remember our deal. Mm -hmm. Hands off till I've got my wife. <laughs> we will do nothing to endanger Madame Baker's life. I'm counting on that. Here, will you wrap this up, please? Uh, you might as well take this. I trust you won't need it, but... Um... Thanks. There is a car waiting in the garage in your name. Pleasant journey and happy return. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks, Professor.
Mr. Baker. You're ten minutes late. I made a wrong turn. This place isn't easy to find, you know. This way, please. Well, where's my wife? Everything in order. The painting first. I took the frame off. You removed some of Jill's work. Why? What made you suspicious? It was just an accident. My wife spilled some nail polish remover on it. Jill! Okay, now look. I've kept my part of the bargain. Where's my wife? We have been tricked. This is not the real painting. Are you sure? My secret mark is on the back. This is the copy I made myself years ago to substitute for the original. Come on, boys. Where's my wife? Don't be a fool. Put up that gun. Cover you, Mr. Baker. These men had no intention to leave either of you alive. The rest of the paintings are in the hearse in the casket. Oh, of course. An effective means of transportation, huh? Take them. You both have earned the everlasting gratitude of France. We shall write to your government. I'm afraid that's all the thanks you will receive. You see, the whole affair will have to be kept from the press. I've got all I want. But I don't understand. What's it all about? Never mind, honey. I'll take you back to the hotel and draw you a picture. I've had all the pictures I want for one day, thank you. <laughs> and so, girls, we pay a final visit to Leonardo's ageless lady with the inscrutable smile. Yes, I'm sure she has many secrets she could tell us if she would. Hello, Professor Beecham. Why, Mr. and Mrs. Baker. <laughs> Professor, you're sure now that that's the original, genuine Mona Lisa? Why, Mr. Baker, I'm as certain of this picture's authenticity as I am of... You're sure that this isn't the original? Hmm? Oh. Um. <laughs> that's the copy, Professor. It was given to us as a souvenir of our Paris adventure, Professor, but we'd like you to have it. Well, I... Thank you, thank you. Of course, I knew this was a copy, an excellent one, but indubitably a copy. Sure you did, Professor. 